Hi, I'm Nick Lornay, and I'm in my home studio up here in the hills, and I'm going to show you my five favorite, it's actually hard to say that, five favorite Pro Tool plugins. I challenge you to say that. Number one of my favorite plugins is this one by Sound Toys that's uh, called the Devil Lock, and it's uh, basically a copy of an, an analog thing that looks very similar. And I will play you the uh, room mics from the Starcrawler session that we did at Sunset Sound, and I'll play it without and then with. So this is uh, without. So not bad, but when you add this, this is what happens. It just makes it much more bombastic and uh, exciting. And it, but it also sets, still sounds very real. It's it's uh, I really love what this does to room mics in particular. It gets really over the top with cymbals. If I switch it off again, you can see that it really exaggerates everything. Um, and just to give you an idea, I'll just play around with um, just one of these. Um, here we go. So you can you can go extreme. Obviously, that's a little too much there. And if it gets too bright, because it tends to make things brighter, you can dull it a bit. The idea is to make it sound thick and powerful. What I've also done on this particular song, as you hear on the chorus of the song, going to the verse of the chorus, it goes to the crash cymbal. And the crash cymbal sounds really over the top. It's too much. So what you can do is you've got a mix button, a mixer knob, sorry. And so you can adjust how much this uh, double lock is affecting it. And I've automated this. If we go into here, you can see. So what I've done is um, it's, I've set it at a level I like for the verse and a level I like for the chorus. And basically, it's just being dropped back down so that the symbols don't sound too ridiculous. Seamless. This can be used on a lot of different things. I've actually recently been using it on a vocal because we wanted this particular vocal to sound like the singer was really sing hard live. It's it's sort of, let's say, like an Iggy Pop kind of vocal. It's not Iggy Pop, but someone who sings a bit like that. And um, it was recorded with a, a very good mic. And we actually wanted it to sound more like a live gig, kind of a lot of uh, oomph. And I found this did the trick for that, made the vocal much thicker. I'll just show you a little bit more on this uh, mic here, what it can sound like. So when that's mixed in with all the drums, you get uh, this kind of thing. So you can hear how uh, wonderfully bombastic that sounds. Number two of my favorite plugins might surprise you because it's something that comes with every Pro Tools uh, rig that you buy. It's this one. Very simple EQ3. And you might think, why do I like this one? 
compared to some of the more elaborate and boutique ones? Well, I like it because it is so simple and I use it as a notch filter. Uh, a notch filter is something that they mainly used uh, for film recording dialogue in film and they had to notch out, in other words, get rid of the sound of the cameras. This is back before digital. And um, so notch filters were, were, made, uh, were, were very fine EQs that you could notch out frequencies you didn't like. This I found to be the best notch filter. You can do it with most equalizers uh, that you can go really narrow on. For example, so I'm picking the, the mid-range here, and uh, this is my amount, and uh, this here is how wide. So if we put it at its most narrow, what we can do, if we listen to Arrow's fantastic vocal on this song, with vocals and guitars and anything mid-range, there's always these frequencies that are a little bit hard on the ears that are naturally unpleasant that we could get rid of. Uh, so in other words, in other, in, you, you can boost the low ends, the high ends and all this and make your vocal really good or your guitar really good. But sometimes just by knocking out a, a frequency it very precisely, that's, an, let's say, an ugly frequency, that can improve the sound more than all the other stuff you do. So uh, let me see. Arrow's vocal is actually really great and really fine. She's got a great voice and the microphone we use is good. But I'm still going to use this to show you what I mean. So if I play the vocal... On Thursday... The mic, you can hear it whistling. So there might be a frequency here. Friday. Well, I knew on Thursday. There's like a bit of a whistle there. I saw you. So if I take that out. And Friday. Well, I knew on Thursday. I saw you. And Friday. Well, I. So that, by doing that, it has made the vocal sound richer. I do also want to add that, you know, as an, as an equalizer to make the vocal or guitar, whatever, sound bigger, I would more than likely use a UAD uh, replica of a Neve 1081. Uh, you know, it's just adding low end and it's very broad. The thing with these type of equalizers that sound great, they're very broad. And I find it really useful to use this one to notch out frequencies I don't like. Uh, and I can show you another use of it, which is, will come in very, very handy for some of you. Uh, you might know, know that the ba bass guitars are really hard to get sounds on sometimes. So if we listen to our, uh, our bass, uh, let me see if I can give you an example. I'm gonna pick just one of our channels. So we might listen to that and think, well, it's all, we like the sound, but one note out of all those notes that he's playing in his bass riff is louder. Because notes and are frequencies, it's the same thing. We can do this. We can play it and find the note. Let's say we want... So... I can find the, each note by simply finding the frequency. So that you can hear, that's picking this one. So by notching that out, it's going to make that note quieter. The second one will sound just as loud as it it did. So if you've got a bass line and one note is sticking out much louder than the others, probably because 
of the pickup, you know, or there's just the sound of the bass, or maybe the bass player was playing that string louder. That's the best way to even out your bass line. You could compress it, but then you're going to affect the sound and all that. Here's my third favorite plugin, again by Sound Toys. Um, and I use this on a lot of things, actually. I use it especially on vocals. Is this one? Is the Echo Boy Junior. I prefer the Junior to the non Junior because uh, I like the way it's laid out. They basically do the same thing. But what it is, is it's, it's, a, it's one box that has all these different tape echoes. I don't know if the camera can get it, but I have there a, a chorus echo made by Roland. So they've put that in here. Um, you can guess which one it might be. I'm pointing at it now, it says space. So you can just flick through these different uh, sounds. I'll show you what I mean on the vocal. On Thursday, I'll just exaggerate what this is doing. I saw you. On Friday. So here you've got the amount in, in seconds. Sorry, milliseconds. It'd be a long time if it was seconds, wouldn't it? Silly me. So that's the milliseconds, and obviously you can adjust that. So on Thursday, I saw you. I saw you. And Friday, and Friday well, I knew. On Thursday, I saw you. So I wanted a kind of Elvis sound, so I went for that. On Thursday, and then you can flick through these different sounds. On Thursday, I saw you. And Friday. Well, I knew. On Thursday, I saw you. On Friday, well, I knew. On and then you've got this added thing. It's like a distortion box, so you can distort it more. Actually, I'm going to go back to, I think it was this one. On Thursday, I saw you. Friday, so that's much cleaner, Thursday, dirtier. I saw Go back you. to this one. Friday, so depending which one you pick, this can be uh, more subtle. Uh, you can also knock the top end off or the bottom end. So it's it's really very sensible layout of what you could possibly need to do with a with an echo delay. Obviously, you can add feedback. So if we put a longer one, you'll see on what Thursday, I saw so you. So if you'd add feedback. On Friday, well, I knew. On Thursday, I saw you. On Friday, well, I knew. On Thursday, I saw you. On Friday, well, I knew. On Thursday, I saw you. So there we go. Lots of fun with that one. Also, you can, if you have done your song to a click, or it's, you know, a programmed song and you've got the BPM, which we have here, up here, you see, the BPM of the song changes, but that's what it is. Uh, you can put it on notes and then you've got quarter notes. You can do it like that, eighth notes, sixteenths. So it's much quicker to find, or you can make it triplets, which would be good for a reggae song, for example. Fourth most favorite plugin is all stuff on UAD. How about that? That just covers the universe. By that, I mean, I'm just uh, giving them kind of props and for doing what they've done in analyzing all this vintage equipment and, um, you know, being able to put it in here. For example, 
This is a compressor that I have up on my top shelf because it's a top shelf kind of piece of equipment. So this, this one is an exact, it looks the same. And when I came to use this in the box, I found that it worked exactly like my real analog one. So uh, I, this is definitely one of my favorite compressors. This is one of my favorite equalizers, the 1081 Neve. Um, and anybody who's used UAD, who has UAD, you know, you can basically br bring in all this vintage stuff that you might be familiar with using uh, if you're an older person like me. Um, and if you're a young person, then I highly recommend you get a UAD thing. Uh, plug it into that thing, mess around with it, you'll love it. So that's my number four is basically UAD stuff. You, I, I, honestly, I don't think I could mix in the box without UAD. My fifth uh, favorite plugin is once again, another sound toys uh, device. At first I thought it was quite gimmicky, uh, but I just find I use it all the time and I have a lot of fun with it. And um, you might think I work for Sound Toys. Well, they probably should give me a job actually. So Mr. Sound Toys, how are you? This thing has got a very strange name and we should ask Mr. Sound Toys why he called it this because I haven't got a clue, but it's called Little Alter Boy. It is basically a harmonizer. It changes pitch. But it also does this other incredible thing, which is a word that many of you might not be familiar with called formant. The formant of a sound is the tone of it. For instance, to give you an idea, you know, men have, if we sing a note, if men sing a note and the women sing the same note, it sounds different, doesn't it? Well, that's the formant. It's not the pitch, it's the formant. So here we've got pitch and formant. So you might ask, will this box make a man sound like a woman? Will it make, indeed, a woman sound like a man? And the answer is yes. You want proof? All right, I'm going to give you proof. Arrow, don't hate me. Arrow is the name of the singer of Starcrawl, just in case you were wondering what I was talking about. Okay, this is her voice. On Thursday, I saw you. Okay, now check this out. If we if we uh, change the pitch, obviously you 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 kind of know what that is. It's going to make her lower, right? So. On Thursday, I saw you. And Friday, well, I knew. So, um, but that's actually changing the note. So if I put that in the song, it would sound like she's singing out of tune. However, the formant is the tonality of her voice. So I'll, I'll just show you the same. On Thursday, I saw you. And Friday, well, I knew. On Thursday, see, I saw you. Now she sounds more like a soul singer or something, right? On Thursday, I saw you. So if you go up, on Thursday, I saw you. And Friday, well, I knew. So you can make her sound like a different singer. It sounded a bit like Kylie Minogue. It's amazing what you can do with this thing. I mean, you can put it on drums and it'll change the pitch of your snare or it'll sound the tone of your snare. Um, obviously, being a harmonizer, it's not 100% time accurate. So on drums, it might be a bit flangy. But what you can do as well is things like this. On this song, we have some haze. Okay, so this is uh, Henry going, hey. Hey, hey, hey! Right? That's got a bit of a delay on my favorite 
uh, Echo Boy Jr. It's also got some distortion on my other favorite thing, this distortion box, which um, I use a lot. But if we add this, the little altar boy, look what happens. It makes Henry sound like a lot more people because I've split it up. So we've got his direct one would be the dry, and then there's the lower one, lower formant is the wet. So if I play it again, I'll adjust this and you'll see what I mean. Hey, hey, hey. So this is dry. Hey, hey, hey. And this is wet. Hey, hey, hey. And um, what's going on here is I've uh, pitched it down an octave. 12, minus 12, see if I do this. Hey, hey, hey. So if I put it on... So we'll go down there. Well, that sounds a bit ridiculous, so you can mix in a bit of the dry hey, hey, hey. and get it so it sounds like a crowd of people. Hey, hey, hey. Fantastic. Hey, hey, hey. And the foreman just changes the tone. If, if I play this, I could do this. That's not changing the pitch. It's just changing. I kind of liked it around about there. Put this back. The other great thing this box has is drive, as in distortion. So it's just like a distortion pedal. Again, I'll show you. I'll show you the wet one so you can see what it does. And without. So you can play with this and you can do some great things. And that is my number five favorite plugin for the protulation of the nation. So thanks for watching. I hope some of what I've said has made some kind of sense. And um, I will see you through the speakers of all the songs that you play that I made. I'm watching you. So have some fun out there twiddling with these pieces of equipment. It's a lot of fun. And uh, you can make some great music. Bye-bye for now.